Welcome to St. Paul's Online Service. I'm Pastor Cindy Austin. On Sunday, March 21st and March 28th, we will be collecting money to go towards Easter grocery gift cards for people in need. Whatever you can help donate, that would be great. On Wednesday, we'll be having our Lenten services online as well in the parking lot at 6 p.m., weather permitting, of course. We continue now with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and soul and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone and new life has begun. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, rich, rich in mercy, by, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the 21st chapter of Numbers, beginning with the 4th verse. From Mount Hor, the Israelites sent out, sent out by the way to the Red Sea, to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord said poisonous serpents out among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent, and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze, and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel is recorded in the third chapter of John, beginning with the 14th verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who hate evil, the light, and do not come into the world so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clear, be seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ.
Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, Lord, to receive your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, so that by hearing we may believe, and by believing we may obey your will. Reveal to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Back when I was in elementary school, my fifth and sixth grade science teacher, Mr. Vots, had a, a variety of plants and animals in the science room. And one was a six-foot-long boa constrictor. When I was in sixth grade, Mr. Vots was laid up for a month with back trouble. But my fr friend Katerian and I were supposed to make sure that the snake had water every day and once a month give it a mouse. I remember one day we went in and the snake was gone. We looked everywhere, but we couldn't find it. Later on that day, as the substitute teacher opened up a side drawer, she saw a snake tail and realized that the six-foot boa constrictor was wrapped around in the desk. I guess she jumped out of the classroom running and screaming for the other science teacher. We all seem to have snake stories, don't we? One poll from about 10 years ago said 36% of all adults listed the same number one fear, snakes. Ophidiophobia, fear of snakes. You can see why some people never wanted to see that movie, Snakes on a Plane. In the first lesson to, for today, this is an incredibly strange story. The Israelites were still in the wilderness, still wandering after 40 years, and of course, still complaining. Actually, this is the fifth and last story of the complaining or murmuring stories. Why are we still out here? Oh, at least we had it better in Egypt when we were slaves. And they were wondering if God really was leading them at all. They were tired, they were cranky, and they just wanted this to be over. Wasn't a great scene. I mean, after all, what else could go wrong? Cue the snakes, poisonous snakes, and they bit people and died. Kate Bowler, professor at Duke Divinity School, published a book called Everything Happens for a Reason and Other Lies I've Loved. This book is a memoir about her journey as a 35-year-old who seemed to have everything going right in her life. A thriving career married her high school sweetheart and a brand new baby boy. All was great until her world was turned upside down by the diagnosis of stage four colon cancer. So in the midst of wrestling with her own mortality, she decided to go to Texas to hear an inspirational speaker during Lent. But unfortunately, this speaker confessed that she didn't like to deal with the heavy stuff and was afraid of death and would rather not talk about it or you talk about it either. Bowler was so upset by this and said to a friend, everyone is trying to Easter out of me because we need to remember that Lent is the reminder that we live in the midst of a suffering world that death is a part of life unfortunately we're called to face it and we can't hide from it the snakes come and bite the Israelites and the people are dying and this is where the part of God gets interesting Moses goes to God and complains about the snakes that are killing people but rather than get rid of the snakes, God tells Moses to take a serpent, the very ones that have caused the Israelites so much pain and suffering, bronze it and set it on a pole. That way, if someone is bit, they need only look to the serpent, lift it up in the desert to be healed. God didn't take away the serpents. And God doesn't take away our suffering and pain in this world. But God comes in the midst of that suffering and pain and offers healing for our wounds, relationships for our loneliness, and faithfulness, even when we're not faithful. Jesuit priest Gregory Boyle works with gangs in L.A. and has won uh, the California Peace Prize for his work. 
And Boyle often talks about all the unexpected places where he has met God and says, if we only look for God in the unexpected places, we might find God there. Father Boyle shared a story about a woman named Soledad who had two of her sons killed by gang activity, both of whom had actually outgrown their own gang behavior, had moved on to reclaim their lives, and were living with hope, integrity, movement. They were going to college. They were going to work. But they both happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and they were shot by and killed by a rival gang. She was devastated by both of these losses and struggled to live each day. But she had two more children, so she needed to live. At one point, she was taken to the hospital herself with an irregular heartbeat and chest pain. When she was at the hospital, the doctors were tending her, to her with EKGs and the like, when suddenly there was a rush of activity at the entrance. With a flurry of bodies and medical staff moving into their professional roles, a teenage gang member was rushed to the vacant space right next to Soledad. The kid was covered in blood from multiple gunshot wounds, and they began cutting off his clothes. The wounds were too serious to waste time pulling the curtain that separated Soledad from this kid, fighting for his life. People were pounding on his chest and inserting IVs, and Soledad turned and saw him. And she recognized him as a kid from the gang that most certainly had killed her sons. She told Boyle, when I saw that kid, I just kept thinking of what my friends might say if they were here with me. They'd say, pray that he dies. But she looked at this kid struggling to sidestep the fate of her sons. And as the doctors worked and screamed, we're losing him, we're losing him. She said, I began to cry as I've never cried before. And I started to pray the hardest I've ever prayed. Please, don't, don't let him die. I don't want his mom to go through what I have. And the kid lived. That's where God is. In the midst of the suffering and pain, in the midst of those unexpected moments of grace, and how we need to turn to God to realize we don't have this all right. We mess things up. We don't understand this life. But how we need a God. How we need a Savior. Jesus was lifted up. He suffered death on the cross. Was raised from the dead. And ascended into heaven. We have a Savior who came for you. Who loves you who forgives you. Look to God. Look to the cross and be healed. Amen.
us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe, believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, let us boldly pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You call us, Lord, to look to you in the midst of our suffering and pain. Grant us your courage, your patience, and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. From east to west, your steadfast love is shown. Nourish seas and deserts wilderness areas and cities, give water to thirsty lands, nurture spring growth that feeds hungry creatures, bless farmers as they prepare for the growing season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You sustained your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Prosper the work of those who aid victims in famine and drought. Bring peace in places where scarce resources cause violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry and without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. By grace we have been saved. Fill this congregation to overflowing with that grace, that we show mercy to others. Nourish in any in our midst who are hungry, especially children, and bless our ministries of feeding and shelter. Give us patience and courage when that way seems long. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The body of Christ, given for you. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. The blood of Christ shed for you. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we are reminded that Christ is present, who comes to us with love, forgiveness, and frees us from sin, death, and the power of the devil. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. My Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. No one can do like Jesus, not a mumbling word he said. He went walking down to Lazarus' grave and erased him from the dead. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. My Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. When Jesus was on earth, the flesh was very weak. He took the towel and girded himself, and he washed his disciples' feet. peace share the good news thanks be to god jesus is a rock in